The way we're taught to learn in school is wrong. Memorize, repeat, test, and forget. Schools train us to cram for exams, but they don't teach us how to actually learn and retain information. That's why most of us struggle to pick up new skills, but it doesn't have to be this way. Imagine being able to learn anything 10 times faster than the average person. Languages, coding, music. In this video, I'm about to share five scientific methods that will supercharge your learning process. Learning isn't just about memorizing. It's about understanding understanding, applying, and retaining knowledge in a way that sticks. If you do a Google search on how to learn fast, you come up with generic advice that has the usefulness of a road sign in the desert. If you really want to learn something, first you got to understand what learning actually is. Learning happens in tiny cells called neurons. Our brains made up of billions of them. These neurons talk to each other through connections called synapses, where they send signals as little electric pulses. Every time you learn something new, your brain builds new connections or strengthens the ones you already have. This process is called synaptic plasticity. When you're trying to learn something new, it's easy to fall into the overthinking trap. You spend hours analyzing every little detail, looking for the perfect strategy or the right time to start, but you just end up stuck. So the best way to beat overthinking is to just start doing it. Learning is an imperfect process by its very definition, because if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn, and getting it wrong essentially means accepting imperfection. So let's dive right into the first method that can help you learn more effectively. Method one, focus on the Pareto Principle. It says that 80% of the results come from just 20% of the effort. In other words, not everything you do matters the same way, and figuring out what has the biggest impact helps you get more done in less time. To find your 20%, ask yourself, if I could only focus on one or two things, what would make the biggest difference? For example, if you're learning a new language, instead of trying to memorize every single word you'll probably never use, you could focus on the most common ones because they'll cover most everyday situations. Method two, use moderate stress. A bunch of scientific studies show that a moderate level of stress can actually be good for learning. This kind of stress, often called eustress, can boost your memory, focus, and overall brain performance. Stress shouldn't be too overwhelming, but just enough to give you the right push to get things done. Here's how to apply moderate stress in learning. Step one, set realistic deadlines. Giving yourself time limits for your study sessions creates a little bit of pressure that can actually boost your productivity. Step two, simulate exam conditions. Once you're comfortable with a piece, try playing it in front of someone. This creates a bit of stress, similar to what you'd feel during a real performance. Step three, take on new challenges. Challenge yourself with pieces that are just above your current level. This will get you out of your comfort zone in a manageable way, gradually increasing your skill. These steps can be applied to anything you want to learn. Method three, use the spacing effect. Most learning doesn't actually happen Happen while you're studying, but in the interval, when we forget the information, this process of trying to recall what you've learned strengthens the brain pathways connected to that information, making it easier to remember later. The goal is to review the material before you completely forget it, and gradually increase the time between review sessions. These intervals can vary depending on how well you remember the topic. A 2012 study shows that this method helps not only with simple things, but also with more complex concepts. and that the benefits are seen even a week after the end of the session. However, it is almost impossible to estimate when complete forgetting will occur. Massed practice, on the other hand, is inefficient because there are no gaps between sessions, leading to weaker retention. By following the spacing effect, you'll retain more information and save a tone of time in the long run. Method four, learn by doing. One of the biggest mistakes people make when trying to learn something is thinking that studying alone is enough. Watching a video tutorial or reading books can give you knowledge, but knowledge without action is useless. You have to actually do the thing to truly understand it. Let me give you an example. When I was trying to learn magic tricks, I thought I could just watch a bunch of videos and suddenly become amazing. I'd sit there for hours, re-watching the same tutorials over and over. But when I actually tried to pull off the trick, my hands fumbled, I kept forgetting the steps, and it didn't end well. No matter what you're trying to learn, you have to step out of the learning zone and into the doing zone. Method five, teach what you learn. Teaching others is one of the most powerful ways to lock in what you've learned. When you explain a concept, 
concept, you're forced to organize your thoughts and present them clearly, which helps deepen your understanding. According to the Learning Pyramid model, most people remember only about 10% of what they read in books, but they can retain up to 90% of what they teach to others. Even if you don't have someone to teach, pretend you're explaining it to an audience, or record yourself on video. You'll find that the simple act of explaining turns what you know into solid, lasting knowledge.